Hi, I'm Bill Miller, and I'm going to give a short demonstration for the beginning user of OpenStat. I'm using the Vista operating system with this computer, and you'll notice that I do have an icon that I created when I loaded OpenStat on this machine. I'm going to double click it and start the OpenStat program. Now you can enlarge OpenStat uh, initial uh, view by clicking on the size button up in the upper right corner to the maximum size. When you first start OpenStat the intention typically is to put some data into a data file. In this case we're going to create a data file that has uh, a coded value for gender, one for male, two for female, another variable that has a code for a grade level, and I'm going to use three values, one, two, and three, to represent the grade three, six, and nine. The third variable I'm going to create is going to be a variable for a reading score, and so I'll simply call it a score. Now, to create these three variables, I go up to the variable and click on with the left mouse key that menu, and underneath it you'll see a variety of options. The thing I'm going to do first is to define my variables. When you click on the define, you'll notice that there is, under the data dictionary, one variable already defined. I'm going to click on that variable name and change it to gender. I type that in. Now I'm going to press the down arrow on my keyboard and add another variable. Again, I can type in a name and I'll put in this case a variable for a variable label grade. Next, I'll press the down arrow key once more, and I have the option now to enter a third name, which I'll call score. These three variables now have short labels as well as long labels. You can change each of the long names if you wish also, uh, and indicates things like uh, uh, male equal one, and female equal two. Notice that I have not left any blanks. That's important for the short name as well as long names is that you do not insert any blanks. Oftentimes you can use an underscore key to uh, represent a blank. I'll put in for grade uh, uh, three underscore six underscore nine. And for the label for score, I'll put in uh, national reading test. Now, the next columns I notice there's a type. And up above it there's a drop down menu, we call it, for the variable types. If I want to code gender, I know it's going to be an integer value and not a floating point value, which is the default. So I'm going to come up and click on the down arrow on the menu for the variable types, and I'll click on the one equal integer. Notice now it's changed the type to a value of one. Zero represents a floating point value. One represents an integer value. I'm going to do the same for grade because it's also going to be an integer value. I'm simply going to type a one in this case, which is another way of entering the type value. 
Now integers do not have any decimal fractions, so that should be a zero, and that one should be a zero for both gender and grade. You can define missing values in the options menu, which we'll cover in another uh, session. But uh, for now, the default is typically three nines or five nines, uh, and if you have a missing value, then you can uh, put this in and the computer will recognize that it is a missing value. Once you have defined your variables in the data dictionary, come down and click on the return key. And you'll notice the grid now, which before only had a single cell in dark blue, it now has three cells and the labels gender, grade, and score as we defined our three variables. Now you can begin to enter information. The dark background indicates that we're ready to enter for the first subject and I'm going to enter a gender and I'm going to press the tab key and put in a one for the grade, first grade level, which is grade three, and then press the tab key again, and I have a score of, uh, let's say, 3.10 for that subject. If I press the tab key again, it goes back to the first column. Now I'm going to use the down arrow, the arrow points down on your keyboard, to add three or four more cases. Let's add three more cases and leave space for another one. I'm going to use the up arrow key on my keyboard for entering three more subjects or two more subjects for the first uh, gender and grade level. One tab, one tab, and the next case will have a 2.4 for that uh, subject. If I press tab again, it goes to the next case. Now one of the things you might notice is that there's been some changes in the numbers as they've been entered and I press the down arrow or move to the next uh, position. The next subject I enter is going to be the same gender and grade level so I'm going to press a one and tab, one and tab and let's say this student uh, obtained a score of 3.7 Instead of a 3.7, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to enter a 3 comma 7. And then I'm going to press the tab key. And I don't get a message that there's an error. But let me come back up with the up arrow, go over to that 3 comma 7 and press the down arrow. Oh. When I do that, I notice that there's an error message. 3.7 is not a valid floating point value because I'm using the American standard, which does not use a comma, but a period for a decimal fraction. I notice up here there's a cell edit, and I can click that on. Double click it, for example, will let me change the whole value to a 3.7. And now if I press the down arrow, I need to press the enter first. If I now press the down arrow, I see that the formatting has been changed. Notice what happens if I cursor up with my up arrow and then cursor down. All the values seem to be reformatted. In fact, that's exactly what is happening. If you want to format all of the values at one time, you can go to the Edit Manual and click on Format Grid Values. And you'll see that they've all been aligned with the correct number of decimal points and uh, the correct uh, indentation. Now, I could enter quite a number of values in this case. I'm going to, in fact, close this particular file and open 
the same file on which I've entered uh, 18 subject scores. So I'm going to go up to Files, Close File, and then I'm going to Files again and open a text type file. And I have saved the file under the name Temporary. So I'm going to click on Temporary and open that. Now there's the file that I actually uh, created and saved under the name Temporary. If we were to add more information, again, we can go up to Files, Save a Text Type File. In this case, the name is Temporary. And I'll click on Save. Notice where it's being saved. In my computer, it's going to be saved under the file called Documents. And I need to remember that when I go to open it again. Now, of course, you'll want to begin exploring some different analyses. For example, we might wonder, do males and females really differ on the scores? So we could come up to Analyses and do a comparison. We're testing the hypothesis that the two means are different or the same for the values entered on this uh, data grid. I'm going to click on the option Values in the Data Grid. And I'm going to indicate that they are independent scores. So the first variable is score, and the next is the group variable. I'm going to click on gender, and we've used codes 1 and 2 for the two values. And now I'm ready to click continue. And here we have the comparison of two means the mean values for each, and assuming equal variance for the two groups, the probability of the t-value that's obtained is pretty high, so we have to conclude there's no significant difference between the two groups. I'll click the Return button, and we'll do one more quick analysis. I'm going to click on the Analysis, and come down to Analysis of Variance, and click on the 1, 2, or 3-way ANOVA procedure. My dependent variable it depends upon, of course, the group and uh, the grade level is the score. My first factor is gender. Second factor is grade. And I'll do a Chaffe test and a Tukey test. And I'll let the means be plotted and click continue. So the results you can scroll up on the output. The results show that uh, there was a significant difference uh, between the columns as you would expect for grades 3, 6, and 9 on a reading test. But there's no differences on the gender, uh, which is our rows. There's no significant interaction of gender with uh, grade level. And uh, the overall uh, test uh, is summarized in terms of the means, the variances, standard deviations for each of the row of cells. There's a test for homogeneity of variance, and then the comparisons by Chaffe and Tukey. When the output uh, has been examined, you may want to print it, and you can do that by clicking on a little print icon up in the results window. I'm going to simply return and it now shows the means for the males and females and it shows the means for each grade level which you can see are quite different and then it'll show the interaction of rows and columns and finally uh, we return. And that's enough for this session. We'll return for another one at a later time.